Here's a little story time of what my crazy celebrity ex-boyfriend would get mad at if I did or did not do. He would get mad if I would, for example, go to the DMV and put lip gloss on to take a picture. He said that I was trying to get attention from other guys and the fact that he wasn't going with me proved that I was trying to get attention from other guys, therefore pick up guys at the DMV. <laughs> he would also get mad if I showed him too much affection or if I tried to kiss him because he said that that meant that I was a nymphomaniac and that the only conclusion he could come to was that I was cheating on him because I was a nymphomaniac. So eventually I stopped being affectionate altogether and that made him think that I didn't want him because I was never affectionate. So I told him one day, well, if I am affectionate, it's bad, but if if I'm not affectionate, it's bad. And he said, you're right, so you're stuck. He would also, for some reason, think that I was Little Wayne's side chick. So anytime a Little Wayne song came on, I had to. Part two of what my celebrity ex-boyfriend would get mad at if I did or didn't do. He would get mad if I answered the phone too quick because that meant that I was hiding something and I didn't want him to be suspicious, but it also made him mad if I didn't answer the phone quick enough because that meant that I was definitely doing something bad. He would also get mad if I offered to go over to his place instead of mine because that meant I was hiding guys in my apartment, in my bathroom and in my closet. So he would randomly show up to my apartment, check underneath my bed, my closets and my bathrooms. And when he saw that there was no one there, he would storm out and say I'm gonna catch you one day he would also get upset if my manager or my agent called me telling me that I had an audition because it made him envious although he would say that what they were trying to do was actually pimp me out he would get so envious and jealous if I had booked a commercial if I was working on set or if I had anything going for me in my life other than him part three of all the things that would make my crazy celebrity ex-boyfriend jealous and upset I happened to look like Lil Wayne celebrity ex at the time so Lil Wayne happened to say my name in a rap song Although I didn't know Little Wayne, and he thought that that meant that I was for sure sleeping with Little Wayne, although I didn't know Little Wayne. He thought that I had all these connections with rappers and that I spent time with them every single week, although I spent my time with him all the time. He would also get upset when random girls on the street would stare at me for any reason because he thought that her and I had this whole history and that I was trying to take her guy, and for that reason she hated me, and for that reason she was looking at me. It couldn't be anything else, like maybe she liked my clothes or something. It had to be the fact that I was doing something bad to her. He also hated when guys stared at me because that meant that I knew the guy from someplace and that the guy was following us around keeping tabs on me because he was probably my pimp or my lover. Right. And God forbid anyone gave me a compliment, he would get envious and jealous, but if someone said I had nice eyes, I hated it. I would avoid eye contact with people just so that no one would say anything. Part four of what would make my celebrity ex-boyfriend crazy, jealous, and mad. Because he was so jealous and controlling, I never put my phone in my pocket or in my hand or anything like that because I didn't want him to think that I was hiding anything from him. I always left it in plain sight so that he could check it if he wanted to. So this one time my mom called me and I answered the phone. He was right there in front of me and I said, hi mom, blah, 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 blah. We had a bit of a conversation and he got up and left. So I stayed in the room and I left my phone there and then I went to the kitchen where he was and he comes up to me and he says, who was that on the phone? And I said, that was my mom and he's like no it wasn't that's why I had to leave the room because I couldn't stand listening to you lie to my face I said why don't you go check my phone to see if it's actually my mom so guess what he does he goes and grabs my phone and calls my mom he says who is this he was so rude to her I was mortified and worse of all my mom thought it was a joke so she kind of started laughing and then he hung up on her after that he didn't speak to me for at least a week and then he broke up with me Part five of what would make my celebrity ex-boyfriend crazy jealous. One of the things that would instantly make him upset was if I answered my text messages too quick when they came in. So whenever a text message would come in, I would wait four to five minutes so that he could see that I was in no rush to get it. If I did answer it too quick, he thought that I had a pimp or somebody waiting for me and that I was just getting ready to go to work. So this one time my mom messages me and I see her text message come in. So I grab my phone right away to text her back because we weren't really talking on the phone much because of him, he would always get jealous. Seeing that my mom texted me, I picked up the phone and I replied back. He grabbed it from me instantly without even saying anything and asked who it was and I said it was my mom. He looked at all the messages. He actually read all of my messages with my mom nonstop for about 30 minutes and then came to the conclusion that it wasn't her. He then interrogated me for an hour and then he kicked me out because I wouldn't tell him who it was. Part five of what would make my celebrity ex super angry and jealous. He would always get mad if I was nice to our server, whether it was a man or a woman, because to him it was competition and it meant that I wanted them because I was being nice to them. I would mostly stay over at his place and trust me, there were days where I just wanted to be by myself. So in order for me to go home, I would have to come up with an excuse like I was waiting for a package or I had to go clean my apartment or my landlord needed me there because if I went home, he would get mad. 
Part Nobody seven is what would make my celebrity like ex that, crazy and jealous and mad. He would always get mad if I would go run errands by myself, so eventually I had to ask him to go everywhere with me, but then this made him think that I was clingy, although I had to act like I was clingy so that he thought that I wanted to be with him all the time, but I didn't really. Everyone wants their own space, for goodness sake, just to go to run errands. I could never show him that I was independent because if I showed him that I was independent, it meant that I didn't need him and that terrified him. He would also get mad if I spent too much time on my laptop, so any work I had to do, I would have to do it really fast because otherwise he would be right there over my shoulder looking and asking what I was doing and I hated that. I've had a lot of DMs from girls saying that they've had similar situations or that they're currently in a similar situation and I'm happy to be able to help you guys. If you're in a really toxic relationship right now or being abused in any sort of way, please look out for yourself. Please find help. Please tell your family if you can. Here's a story time of how I caught my ex with another girl at a bar. And no, this is not my celebrity ex. So this guy and I had been together for quite a few years and we had a lot of trust in the relationship, but I was visiting my family in Florida. He was in New York where we lived. And he tells me that he's gonna go have dinner with this mutual friend of ours who is a girl. He's hung out with her before I know her and she studied at the same school that we studied in. So I didn't think anything of it and I just said, fine. He said they were gonna have dinner, so about eight hours passed and I realized I hadn't heard from him in those eight hours, so I text him and I'm like, hey, what are you doing? Are you home? So he says, yes, I'm actually home now, and I tell him, so what were you guys doing for eight hours? And he says, we had dinner, we were talking a lot, and blah, 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 blah. And I just wanna say I wasn't jealous at all in the relationship. We had a lot of trust, so we never checked each other's locations, but this time my instinct told me different. So of course I went and I checked his location. He must have forgotten that we had um, our locations turned on. So guess what? Part two of how I caught my ex with another girl at a bar. So it's about midnight and he just told me that he was home, but my instinct told me differently and I always, always trust my instinct. So I went and I checked his location and it turned out that he was somewhere in Brooklyn and we lived in Manhattan on the Upper East Side. So I take a screenshot and I send it to him and guess what he does? He doesn't reply to my messages and proceeds to turn off his cell phone for the next 30 minutes. During those 30 minutes, he kept turning on his phone so I would see his updated location. So I would take a screenshot every time he moved and I could tell that he was in a moving car, obviously trying to haul ass back to the apartment where he said he was. So as he kept turning it on and off, I kept taking screenshots every time he would turn it on. I was literally staring at my phone for those 30 minutes on the toilet. I was collecting all the proof so that he had no way of telling me that I was making things up or that I was wrong. So finally, he turns his phone back on and he's two blocks away from the apartment. Part three of how I caught my ex with another girl at a bar. So I can see from his location that he is now two blocks away from the apartment. So he calls me and pretends like nothing happened. And I said to him, Hey, look, here are all the screenshots, take a look and explain yourself. He knows he got caught at this point, so he started crying, hyperventilating, almost having a panic attack, and he always did this whenever I got upset at him. I decided to grill him anyway. He begins to explain that he was having dinner with her, and they then decided to go to a bar because they were having such a great time, and that he didn't want to tell me that he was at a bar because he thought that I would get suspicious, and I said, well, why would you do that instead of just telling me the truth when that would not have upset me? What upsets me is that I caught you lying to me and that you're at a bar in Brooklyn with some other girl. I definitely lost my trust, and I told him to send me a statement of the bar, a bank statement, anything that proved that he was at this bar at that time, which he didn't. Of course, um, yeah, we're no longer together, yeah. Story time about how I got out of the abusive relationship I was in with my celebrity ex. Yes, he is a celebrity, he's on TV right now, so if you wanna know who it is, go to any of my other story times, his name is all over the comments. So, after he made me take the lie detector test, which turned out to be a con because he had hired a con artist without him knowing, we didn't speak for about three days, but then he started texting me. We were going back and forth, and I knew that in order to end things, I needed to see him in person. Even though he had broken up with me, he was still trying to get back together with me, and I knew I had to end it, otherwise he wouldn't leave me alone. At this point, he had been physically and emotionally abusive with me, but every time he was, it was because he was on some substance, and I knew that if he got off the substances, he would just be a better person. That was just me being naive and thinking that I could help him. Of course, as soon as I get there, he begins to accuse me of having stolen something from his closet, which I couldn't have because I wasn't even with him. Him. He looks through my purse and he gets mad because he doesn't find anything. I knew that he was on something and I could just tell that he was very aggressive. So I thought to myself, I better leave before he blows up. This is where I get scary. Come back for part two. Part two, there is a trigger warning here. When he sees there's nothing in my purse, he actually throws it over a balcony that's inside of his bedroom that there is no access to. So I couldn't actually grab my purse or my keys and leave. 
I head to the door and I thought, you know what, I will just sit outside and wait for him to calm down. But he doesn't let me leave and he says, just hold on a second, I'm gonna go get some water. So he goes to the kitchen to grab some water and then he comes back and throws the water in my face. I'm in shock at this point. Right away I start crying instantly and this always upset him whenever I cried. So he says, why are you crying now? And then he just acted like he hadn't thrown water in my face. I walk over to the bathroom to try to get a towel and he does not let me get the towel. Instead, he pushes me into the shower and turns on the shower head. And he said, you definitely need to clean yourself. Who knows who you've been with? In that moment, I literally thought, what did I get myself into? I just walked into the lion's den. Then he hands me a towel. It does get scarier from here on. So come back for part three. Part three, trigger warning. So I get out of the shower, he hands me a towel, and then he begins to question me where I was, where I've been, and I know that he knows that I was home for that entire week because I actually saw him outside of my window one day and I saw his car parked further away, so he knows that I was home. Then he grabbed my phone from my purse, but didn't bring my purse down, just the phone, and starts looking through it when he didn't find anything. He said, well, you must have deleted all the messages. This is when I black out. I woke up 10 hours later, still in the towel, wrapped up in the towel underneath the comforter, and him standing over me and he says, you can leave now. He hands me my purse and the look on his face is just horrendous. I could tell he had been crying all night. His eyes were super swollen. And when I look in my purse, I just see that he cut my ID, he cut my credit card and bent my apartment key. I got dressed and I run out. Luckily, I was able to get into my apartment even with the bent key. I waited a few days because I had some marks on me, but I... Then called my family, they got me a ticket to Miami, I went straight to Miami, I abandoned everything in LA and I